If you're coming up any earlier than 30 meters, you're going to have problems toward the end of the race, and I'll explain why. Most people don't think of 100 meters as like that far for needing a game plan, but if you've run 100 and you just went out there and thought that you could wing it, you know like 60-ish meters. Honestly, like 50 meters, you're not, um, you know, it's tough. This strategy to running the 100 meters is the same game plan I use to run 1046, and it's the same game plan that professionals use. A mistake that most people make is by not planning at all, and that's completely wrong. If you watch what we're about to cover and you go watch your favorite runner, they're going to follow this game plan over 100 meters. There's three phases to running the 100 meters, but they're super important. So important, in fact, that all of your training should be around mastering these three phases. So we're going to begin with this start. You have your zero to 30 meters in which you're in your drive phase. And I like to teach people that like the drive phase is kind of like a plane taking off, right? The plane doesn't instantly jump up to its height. It gradually climbs up to its height. So the drive phase is going to be the part where you're pushing the track behind you. Um, you don't want your heel coming up to your butt. You don't want a full cycle. Um, and we'll explain why you don't want a full cycle in a second, but zero to 30, you should be at a 45 degree angle, really focused on your drive phase. Your drive phase work is going to include everything from like block starts, zero to 10, zero to 20, zero to 30. Now you have a transition phase, at which point you're done with your drive phase. You're beginning to come up a little bit. I like to teach people, or I was taught to like, kind of have the wind that's resisting against you, push you up slowly. You don't want to drive and then pop straight up. You want to gradually, in like like I said, like the plane, you want to gradually come up to reaching your top end uh, speed form, at which point you are cycling over. Now you're beginning your cycles, and it's going to be about a 10 meter phase where you're now into your acceleration into top end speed. So 40 to 70 meters is going to be top end speed. Like we said, this is when you're up tall, you're cycling over, your feet are hitting directly underneath your hips in order to gain that maximum acceleration, like that top end speed. So acceleration from 40 to 70 is gonna be things like flying 30 meters where you get like a running start. And then in between two cones, you have 30-ish meters where you really hit it. You really try to accelerate. Um, it's gonna be working a lot of like turnover drills and things like that. So now that you worked your way, you've been patient through your drive phase. You've transitioned smoothly. You don't just pop straight up. You accelerated towards your top end speed. Now you're beginning to get into this maintenance phase and don't let it fool you. The maintenance phase isn't really like, um, everyone in the world is going to slow down between 70 and hundred meters. Everyone is just about who slows down the least. I hope that makes sense. This is called top end speed for a reason from here on. You're no longer at your top end speed. If I had like a, a radar, a speed gun, you'd be hopefully like 20 something miles per hour here. And then you're slowly going to decrease your speed. The, whoever wins this part is the person that slows down the least. And I'll tell you right now, the person that's going to win this part is going to have stayed patient in their drive phase. So just imagine, let's say you came up um, at 20 meters instead of 30 meters. Everything gets shifted back. So your acceleration phase is going to be back 20, uh, 10 meters. So it's going to end around 60 meters. Your maintenance phase is going to be shifted back. It just becomes longer. This period where you're slowing down becomes further this way. So you have longer in the race, which means you're going to slow down more and more and more. And meanwhile, someone that was patient through their drive phase, transitioned smoothly, accelerated, they're accelerating past you as you're slowing down. And they're going to slow down slower than you are as you really kind of hit a wall. So this maintenance phase, if you, if you watch like, let's say Usain Bolt, he's kind of even with everyone here through this transition phase. Everyone's kind of together, but you see him stand up and accelerate. Not only does he have the same turnover as everyone, but he has a longer stride length. Those are gonna be the two like main components that make up your speed is gonna be turnover and stride length. And then he slows down slower than everyone else because he's longer and has the same turnover. So this maintenance phase is going to be improved by doing things like 150 repeats, 125 repeats, where you uh, run 150 meters and maybe you get that 50 meter running start and you time the 100 so that it's like super fast. Um, there's a lot of strategies towards, towards improving your maintenance phase, but it's usually going to be things that are at full speed with full rest. You want to allow your nervous system time to recover but that are going to be greater than like 60 meters here. So repeats of things over 60-ish, 70 meters. 
um, at really high end speed is going to help you improve your maintenance. You want to stay relaxed. You want to bring your knees up. You want to drive them back down into the track underneath your hips. And another really large key here for the finish is swinging your arms. Whenever your legs become heavy, your arms are still somewhat fresh because you haven't been running on your arms. So you're going to really use your arms to keep our strike. You don't want to tighten up and be getting back here, right? Shoulders forward, arms swinging full and open. That's going to help you finish. And then you're going to get here when you're like two, three meters out, you lean in towards the finish. You always, of course, if your coach isn't telling you this, um, big problems, but you always run through the finish line. An example of running through the finish line, again, if we take like the top sprinters, you know, this is a bad uh, curve here, but you finish through the finish line and where do they slow down? They don't slow down like right here. They run the whole curve. Maybe they're showboating, showboating. Maybe they're, you know, showing off. They kind of stop around here. Part of it is the show. They want to show you like, oh yeah, I'm the champion. I did it. But another part is they don't, they run all the way through the finish line. So they don't finish right behind the finish line. Everything in track goes together. You're not going to find a good 100 meter runner. That's not also a good 200 meter runner. That's not also a good 400 meter runner. The easiest way to get better at your finish is to become better at the 200 and 400 meters. So I'll see you in that game plan video.